On this scorching Saturday afternoon, a man was driving home alone in his wheelchair accessible van, skillfully curving his way along the country road. He congratulated himself on the high level of independence he'd achieved despite being 80% paralyzed for almost 35 years after a broken neck from a swimming accident when he was a teenager. As a quadriplegic, he lived a full life with the help of his morning and evening aides as a university administrator and an author. The summer breeze of his open window mixed with the jazz of a Denver radio station. The freedom he enjoyed today had required years of practice and also required that he occasionally nap to get through each demanding day. Looking forward to a 15 minute rest, he drove his specially equipped van into the far corner of a rural church parking lot and opened the side door toward a massive cornfield. Deciding to snooze in the sun, he began wheeling down the van's four foot ramp, but about halfway down, he somehow lost his balance and for a split second, he fell forward, still sitting in the wheelchair, but his body was bent at the waist and his head was between his knees. He didn't have muscles to sit back up again upright. He was in serious trouble. If drivers on the distant road saw the van, they'd think it was an empty parked vehicle. There was little sense in wasting precious breath or energy to yell for help. He was facing an empty field. The radio said it was about two o'clock that Saturday, and if no one rescued him during the remaining daylight, churchgoers would find his body the next morning. During the first hour, his head gradually slipped lower and lower and lower, and by four o'clock it was between his calves and his breathing was difficult. His face and lips were swelling. He knew that to increase any slim chance of survival, he couldn't let his fear take hold. He couldn't panic. He had to stay calm to slow his metabolism and his breathing. Mind control and coping with stress were tricks he had learned during his many hospital surgeries. Several times, while connected to a pulse monitor, he found amazing correlations between thinking stressful thoughts and an elevated blood pressure and pulse rate, and then conversely, thinking calm thoughts and dramatically slower and lowering them. So he began practicing these stress-reducing tricks he'd learned, and slowly and calmly, he went into the dark, quiet caverns of his mind. And the next thing he heard, the radio said it was the six o'clock news. While he had helped his chances of survival during those three or four hours, he still had not been rescued. The sun was setting over the cornfield. With all his mental strength, he repeatedly tried to send a message to his wife. Peggy, I'm in serious trouble. Peggy, I'm dying. Please rush. Emergency. But several hours later, there was no sign of her or anyone else. It was time to put his affairs in order. He expressed his love to Peggy and to God and told God he hoped he'd accomplished whatever goals his paralysis has served for others. Then one final thought, God, please send someone to rescue me within the next 10 or 15 minutes because I can't survive any longer. The eight o'clock news was announced on the radio. His stress-reducing strategies had helped him survive for over six hours, but now his lips were so swollen they felt like they were ready to pop. His breathing just eight or 10 breaths per minute. Then his blank, mindless gaze under the van saw, what? A pair of feet in sneakers? He summoned all the air and strength remaining and cried, help, help me, please. A man walked up to him. Please lift my shoulders back so I can sit up. The man did so with ease and looked confused as his purple faced man started sobbing uncontrollably. Thank you, thank you so much. The rescuer simply smiled quietly. I'm the groundskeeper for the church. I noticed your van parked next to the sprinkler head that's been broken for a long time. It reminded me I should fix it. Now, I've been putting it off for some weird reason, and I felt like checking it this afternoon. I have no idea why I chose today. I do, the man said, to save my life. We can't always control what happens to us. We can control how we respond and cope with it.